Hey, deserving listeners, love is blind. Let's see what happens. Do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and protect her, forsaking all others and holding only onto her forevermore? I do not. All right, so at the wedding for Raven and SK, SK goes first and says, I do not, which I totally get. I mean, the two of them didn't really seem to hit it off once they had met in person. They didn't even seem to really hit it off in the pods, to be honest. They both had walls up. I think for particularly Raven, I think she... And she talked to, and her family would say this too. I didn't show those clips. There were just a lot of signs that she has a lot of walls up to protect herself, which makes her come across and maybe even believe herself that she doesn't need other people. Now, some people don't really care that much about companionship. There's a lot of different labels that we'll have for this, but, you know, she could be in that category too. So, I don't know. But if she does have the you know, within normal limits, the desire for companionship and love and attachment and vulnerability and a shared experience, which I'm just going to take a guess and say that that's true. I don't know. Then what's preventing her? Because she said this is a pattern of hers, that she will have a hard time opening up to other people. People are often chasing her and she feels like she doesn't really need other people. Even when they were deciding on what they were going to do upon getting married, he was going to go uh, to another state. I think they're in Texas. He's going to go to Berkeley in California for graduate school. And she wasn't going to go with him, which is fine. I mean, she has her job and whatnot. But even before they were talking about that, she was like, I don't want to give up my place. I like my place. It's close to my work, which is also fine. But there was just no discussion about being together as a couple. Now, maybe long ago, Raven was like, I don't know if I really want to be with SK. So anyway... Uh, my impression is that SK was pretty into Raven at the beginning and really trying to make it work, but he was getting some bit of a distance from her and didn't want to push it. And then maybe over time, he started to realize, yeah, I don't think there's much there. Either she doesn't like me or I'm not really feeling it either. And now he's saying I don't, which, you know, makes sense. There was a lot of conversation. There were a lot of conversations where the two of them were saying, we love each other and we're going to get married. And I don't know, it didn't seem credible to me. I don't want to accuse them of lying or deceiving or something, but my, and so <laughs> this is the very first wedding and I'm going to make a prediction and I don't look up any spoilers. Let's see. Let's, let's look at the couples from my notes. So we have Raven and SK. I would have predicted, I would have thought he might say yes. And she would say no. The other thing that I think happens sometimes is they have a conversation away from the cameras and he's like you know I, th I think I'm gonna say yes do you want to say yes and then she's like I think I'm gonna say no and then they might make an agreement where he can say no so that she doesn't have to say no and then he can save face and she doesn't have to be the bad guy or whatever I don't know I, just me just making stuff up but anyways Raven and SK that one makes sense to me Alexa and Brennan, I'm going to say they're going to be a yes, yes. The only possibility is that Alexa is a little hesitant and wants more time, but there has been no problems between the two of them. They seem completely into each other. There has been no ambiguity. I don't know if, what that means, but so I'm going to say Alexa and Brennan are, are going to be a yes, yes. And I do, I do. Zineb and Cole, definitely a no, no. There's just no possible way, right? Th given what we've seen, I think it would be incredibly unwise for them to get married at this point. It doesn't mean that their relationship is doomed. Maybe they can date after the show, but I can't imagine that it would be wise for them to commit at this point. So how they play it out on stage, I don't know, because I think they work out who's going to be asked first prior to going up there, but I'm just going to take a guess and say that they're both a no internally, how that plays out. I don't know. Colleen and Matt, uh, that one's a little tougher. They're on the borderline. I could see that. I could see both of them saying no, and I could see both of them saying yes. I could see one of them. I could see Matt saying yes and Colleen saying no. 
I can't really, at this point, I can't, I didn't show the scene, but Matt actually showed a fair amount of insight. He was talking with, I can't remember who he was talking to, but he's like, I'm overreacting, like on these little things, I'm like flipping out and reading, I don't understand. Oh, he's talking with his friend and he's like, I, these little things will happen. Colleen would do these little things and then I just completely flip, I don't know what's wrong with me. And I'm like, dude, I know what's wrong. There's nothing wrong with you. I know why you do that. It's because you had one relationship that you, from high school for 10 years and she not only cheated on you, but it seemed like it was an extensive cheating process, but she only told you about the cheating when she got pregnant and she was gonna have the kid. So yeah, that's gonna do a number on you, especially in any relationship, but essentially it's his first love or his, you know, his high school sweetheart. And that kind of love is a particularly innocent love at times. So that could really destroy you, right? And I'm sure they had a lot of people around them saying, you guys are so cute. You're perfect for each other. You're the best, you know, you met in high school. How cute. It's like and all the friends are jealous that they have each other. And then that happens, it just rips your heart out. And so this, the fact that he's a little sensitive shouldn't surprise him, but he, he's surprised by it. But anyway, but he had a lot of insight into not blaming Colleen. He's like, this is all my fault. I'm overreactive, what's wrong with me? Okay, uh, also we heard, I didn't show this clip either, that his family and friends were saying that Matt, after the divorce, was cut off. And when he, he they called him two date, Matt or something that he would go on two dates with someone and then he was out. He was, and he's like, you know, and I think he, that's the narrative is that he was just very picky, but I would imagine that he was still hurting and terrified of giving his heart over to someone to be destroyed. And so maybe that's even why he went on the show because it would force him to do something that he's been wanting to do, but having a hard time doing. And then once he did, there were, you know, there was the aggravation of coal, which wasn't significant, but it, you know, it was there and he reacted and he recognizes that he overreacted. Then, oh, also, there's a detail that I didn't show that, because he was, you know, screaming at 2.30 in the morning saying, I'm packing my bags. And the way that he portrayed Colleen is that Colleen just ditched him and went to the clubs, but that isn't what happened. What Colleen was saying was, hey, Matt, let's go out tonight. And Matt was like, okay. And then uh, uh, Colleen and Matt were gonna, they were gonna go in different groups, different cars or something. Colleen calls him as they're heading out. He doesn't get the call or something. She's at the club and then he calls. she calls him and says, hey, come out and then he got triggered and stayed home and was hurt and he's like screw this i'm gonna pack my bag so it was like not anything like the way he was portraying it right <laughs> she she wanted it it's, it's that's my memory anyway that was a while ago but so yeah i could see colleen and matt potentially both saying yes i could see colleen saying no though nancy and bartice yeah i mean <laughs> they're both a no that there's just no possible way. i don't know how it's gonna play out so we're going to have to sit through all these wedding scenes. You know, I, I didn't even show you all the scenes. I, I, I don't know. I, after three seasons of the show, I like the parts that I like, but there's so much in here that I, f I think is completely just fabricated. And, you know, it's reality TV. What are you going to do? And it is kind of compelling to have it be on the altar because if this scene was in a hotel room or something or in their apartment where they're deciding whether or not they're going to get married. It has less weight, but you're, you know, we have a, a lot of importance and meaning and romance around weddings and to be rejected at the altar is, you know, this big deal. And so, you know, I get the drama, but it just makes me not really be that compelled by the conversations post a certain point where I think they have made a choice internally or externally and all the other scenes like when she was getting a dress i'm like i don't think i don't think they're going to get married i am 100% sure that one or both of them is going to say no on the altar and they're just acting like it's all normal and the words that she's saying isn't exactly saying yes but kind of in that direction anyway so i feel like the show just drags on a little longer than it needs to anyway <laughs> Just my opinion. I don't know what y'all think, but so for Nancy and Bartice, yeah, I just I just can't imagine the two of them working out. So yeah, I, Alexa and Brennan, yes, yes. Colleen and Matt, possibly a yes, yes. The rest of them, it's just got to be no, no. I, it's just my assumption. So that's my prediction. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. I'm sometimes wrong. I'm often wrong. Then you drag your family. <laughs> I just. 
Yeah, you know, it's it's like they get all dressed up. Some of them probably travel. There's all this time spent, and and then I think what happens is the cast members have to keep up the ruse afterwards because there's all these interviews and podcasts that they're on and stuff, and their family might ask them like, "So did you know?" And because if SK's like, yeah, I kind of knew a few weeks earlier than the wedding. And then the family would be like, then why the hell did you invite me to the wedding, you jerk? Like, so I think there's a there's a lot of incentive for them to keep up the ruse. Now, they could all be telling the truth. Maybe I'm just a freak that sees conspiracies where they don't exist. But I, I don't have any direct evidence. I love you too. <laughs> However, we have a very unique and complex set of circumstances. I feel like today is not the best time for us to do this. I mean, that's one way of putting it. The, the way it seemed, they just didn't really have a connection, both emotionally, vibe, sexually, attraction-wise, you know. They just didn't seem to have it, and He's saying that it's their special circumstances. I think one of the major special circumstances I think he's uh, referring to is that they have to live apart for the first couple of years, next couple of years. So, yeah, I mean, I suppose if you're going to try to diplomatically narrativize the situation, then that'd be one thing to say rather than... Because my guess is, this is total guess, is that if SK were to be honest, he'd be like, the reason why I said no is because I don't think you've liked me since we met in person. <laughs> no, you know, no harm, no foul, but I, I don't think you were really into me and I tried to make it work and then I wasn't into you. I, I, that's just, my, I don't know if that's true though. Oh, look at me. <laughs> Yeah, so I think the tears are real and the feelings are real. I think they, they bonded. I, I think that's true as friends. And I think they care about each other. And there might be some kind of romantic love and connection between the two of them. So I think that's real. But that doesn't mean you want to marry someone, spend the rest of your life with someone. And her reaction kind of confirms what I'm thinking, that she didn't want to say yes either. And so this is just a sad day. It's just them verbalizing something that they've probably known out loud. And this means that they'll probably break up and it's a bummer and, you know, there's a loss there, but they probably ultimately don't want to be together. Sorry. Okay. Wait, did she just apologize? Uh, so I don't know if I'm just reading into it, but is she apologizing for not being into him? And I don't know if I'm just reading into it. Let's ruin it. No, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going to walk out now, okay? Yeah. So I, I don't know if I'm... It's, it's just me reading into stuff. My guess is she said I'm sorry, I think because they had talked previously, and she, she told him that she was a no, and he's like, okay, well, I guess I'll be a no too. Because... Because it's very possible that he he showed signs where he actually was really trying to make it work up until the end. So I think she's apologizing for that. I don't know if that's true. And then she asks him, I'm going to walk away now, right? Because that's the procedure. Whoever says no, the other person has to walk away. It's a procedure. That's that's how this, it's like probably in the contract or something. And so I think she's saying that. She's like, so I'm, I have to leave now <laughs> because I think she knows and she knows he knows that she's really the one rejecting him, not the other way around. She's like, okay, I'm gonna leave now. Just, you know, is that okay? Just to support him through life's toughest moments, celebrate his biggest victories, and pledge your undying love as the two of you grow old together. If so, say, I do. I do. All right, well, that was surprising. So <laughs> if I'm still in my conspiracy mindset, I would say that they talked about it beforehand and he said he would say no so that she could say yes. But I'm guessing if within this conspiracy that I'm imagining is happening, which I don't really have any data for, that if the two of them had not talked, she would probably say no. Because unless we are not seeing the goodness or the bond in their relationship and they're only showing us the bad moments, which is possible. I don't know, but I'm, I'm just going to take a guess and say that he's going to say no. I love you. I knew that I wanted you in my life. Absolutely. Now, 
if she's legit saying yes and legit wants to marry him and legit thinks he's going to say yes as well. And what we've seen in this show is a representation of what actually happened, then I would have some questions as to why she would say yes in a situation like that. I'm not a judger. People make their own choices. But the way he had been treating her and the way he talked to her, even when he was still being nice to her, even when they still presumably had a bond, right, when they first met in person, he was like, Raven this and me that and and by implication, you're ugly and disgusting, you know, even though she's not. It's so, yeah, I I would say, like, this is what you want? Is that what you, th- do you think you only deserve a certain amount of love and goodwill from someone else? Do you have, it? Uh, I don't know. But I wouldn't judge. I would just wonder if there's some reason or... There's a reason why she loves him that I just don't see. I don't know. Will you keep Nancy as your most cherished person to experience life's adventures, to support her through life's toughest moments, celebrate her biggest victories, and pledge your undying love as the two of you grow old together? Okay, well, we're not going to find out. <laughs> Because I think this is the last episode, isn't it? Yeah, that was the last episode posted. So we're going to have to wait until... I mean, by the time this episode on YouTube airs, the final few episodes will have already aired. So y'all probably know. But I don't have access to those because at the time of this recording, I don't have access to those episodes. So I have no idea. Well, okay. This is interesting. I'm just going to take a guess and say he's going to say no. But what do I know? And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.